we take this and we we uh, upload it to Launch Control. We just specify those columns that we just mentioned there. Yep. And they Im import those. Yep, that's right. right. We get them in, and then it's going to make you create a campaign. So we think of it kind of like a parent child. The parent is the campaign. So we could create a campaign. Oh, it's going to make me create a new market. This is my demo environment. Uh, the campaign would be. Let's just. I'm in Hennepin County. Minnesota. So let's just say our campaign would be Hennepin County, Minnesota. And then I live in St. Louis Park. So maybe we do an import of St. Louis Park land, um, zero to two acres. I would assign that to the Hennepin County campaign. And mm -hmm. then I can keep importing stuff over and over again and just keep pushing it to the same campaign. Like I have a campaign right now that's actually a four county campaign and I just keep adding more leads to that okay. and you break those up based on sizes usually or how else would you i kind of break it up honestly for me it's based on the realtors that i have i work really closely with realtors so mm -hmm. it's kind of like okay what market do you cover and mm -hmm. so they're like hey we typically work these four counties it's like okay that's a good way because my vas work very closely with the realtors to double check mm -hmm. their comps so for me it's just an easy way to organize the other way to organize it is how do you want to do your reporting? How do you want to see, you know, how many hot leads did you get? How many people did you put on drip? What's your deliverability? Mm -hmm. So some people want to see it camp county by county, mm -hmm. which is great. I've got a client that works one state and he's going through every single county right now. And so he wants to just see that every campaign is each county, but sometimes he'll import the zero to one acres first, and then he'll import one to five and then five to 10. And that makes it a little easier when the texting comes in because it's really overwhelming if you have a lead that's quarter acre and then the next lead is 57 acres. All right. So we've imported, we've created your campaign, and then now it's time to talk about the templates. So you've got all your data in there and now you're really ready to send text messages, but you can't send text if you don't have templates. So I want to explain the different types of templates that are in this system here. So we have initial text messages. These are the first text messages that you would ever send somebody. So you have never texted them before. And these are the first messages. Uh, before we do that, I'll actually explain the, the quick replies. Quick replies are when you're working your inbox, there's going to be a little button called quick replies. And this is a lot of the stuff that we do consulting on. We write all of our clients' templates. But you know, if someone says, who is this? Or how'd you get my number? Or sure, I'd love an offer. What do you say next? So having all these quick replies in there, and I actually have like a whole sequence. It's called a warm lead sequence. The moment somebody says, yes, they're interested in an offer. I have a series of about three text messages that we send to make sure that this person is actually legit. Because when you're sending text messages out of here, it's totally neutral. It's basically like sending neutral letters, like wondering if you're interested in chatting about a number for your property, you're going to get a lot of responses. So it's so important that you use these quick replies to make sure that this person is actually interested in potentially selling below market value. They want to sell quickly. We kind of do a, a little bit of a touch on price. And then the big goal is to get them on the phone. And I will not get them into my CRM system until somebody has talked to them on the phone. Mm -hmm. Super important. Just a qualifying call. Is this person legit? And I mentioned I work with realtors. A little tip is we get a lot of leads that are great that want to sell for market value. Introduce them to your realtor. That's kind mm -hmm. of a way of saying thank you to helping with some of that pricing on the acquisition side. And why is it so important to get them on the phone versus just doing everything through texting? So that's a great question. The problem right now, again, end of 2022, a lot of the house wholesalers are taking on AI and chatbots to do their texting for them. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that the sellers are catching on. They think it's a it's a scam because I mean, think about it. If you got a random text that was like, "Hey, I'll pay you a hundred grand for your property or fifty grand for your property," it's like, who yeah. the heck is this? Mm -hmm. Is this real? So we have to. This is the same thing that we're doing with mail. You have to build the relationship. Mm -hmm. And this industry is only getting more competitive. The properties that we've purchased, they've had two or three other offers, and sometimes the offers are even better than mm -hmm. ours. But because we have such a solid relationship, we've built trust, we've made them laugh, we understand their motivation and their pain and their why, and we've solved their problems, we're going to win the deal mm -hmm. all day long. But that mm -hmm. starts with the phone relationship. Yeah. Now, it's very easy to waste time on the phone too. So that's why we want to make sure we're qualifying them a little bit over text to make sure that that five-minute phone call, and I would not make it more than five minutes, we're just asking questions just to qualify it, is worth our time. And you know, as a, as a land investor, a lot of you guys are probably looking at this like, oh, am I going to do this by myself? We'll talk about VAs in a little bit. 
But if you have a VA, I want them to take that conversation for you. I don't want them to send you, hey, can you comp this? Unless mm -hmm. this person is a qualified seller lead. Gotcha. Perfect. Follow-up messages. So follow-up messages are what we send after we send an initial text message. So we'll send an initial text message. Now, TPCA compliance, staying compliant, um, you have to wait 30 days after you send that first message. Unless they respond to you, then you just start working it, right? If they respond, all the compliance things are out the door. They respond, not, well, not out the door. I shouldn't say that. But a lot of the rules are out the door. You can reply as much as you want. You can use emojis. You can send links. But until then, you can't do any of that stuff. And we'll talk about that when we build out our initial messages. Mm -hmm. Same thing with follow-up messages. We have to wait 30 days. And then we can come into uh, this section right here. There'll be a little button called Create Follow-Up Campaign. So let's say we send 2,000 text messages to Hennepin County, Minnesota. It took us about seven days to get through that campaign. We'll come back 37 days later, and all of those people that didn't respond to our first text will be available for a follow-up campaign. And mm -hmm. so you'll be a little button right here where it says create follow-up campaign, and that's where you can start sending your follow-up messages. So initial messages, quick yep. replies, and yep. then follow-up messages. So initial is just like... The first thing you send them, quick replies are the pre-made replies to verify that they're legit, or there's probably quick replies for a lot of other purposes too, right? Tons. They yeah. say, you know, if they say like, no, I'm not interested. Okay, well, what do we say to that? If they mm -hmm. say, think of anything they could possibly say, like mm -hmm. uh, maybe, or I'm already listed with a realtor. You've mm -hmm. got quick replies all baked out for that. Mm -hmm. So it's like your VA doesn't have to think about, oh, what should I say? It's like, mm -hmm. no, boom, boom, boom. And we've got this nice flow of just here's the messages if they say no not interested we've got a flow send them mm -hmm. a message and get them on a drip so they get yeah. texted gotcha and then follow-up is if they just don't do anything and you reply 30 days later does that go on like forever or like how long would you follow up before just quitting depends on your area you know if you're loving the area you're making money you're doing deals you're comping it i've been texting that same area in nevada for years i'll never stop you know i'll mm -hmm. update the data probably get a relative campaign going. Maybe there's also person two in that direct skip file. We're just going to dig, dig, dig as far mm. as we can go. Uh, but there's other areas where we texted one time and immediately I could tell that this area has been completely poached by builders mm. and everyone knew that they wanted market value and it just wasn't worth our time. If your messages do not get delivered, like if the reason they're not replying is because they're not seeing it or it's not getting there, does launch control tell you that? Like, do you, yes. is there a way to know? Okay. Yep. There's deliverability numbers. And when we get into my live environment, we can, uh, we gotcha. can walk through deliverability and then response rates. I want to see around a 20% response mm. rate. That's what gotcha. I'm looking for. Yeah. And response is just, that could include, I hate you. Don't ever talk to me again. F off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Yes. And then uh, for these different message templates, does Launch Control give you anything to start with or do you have to create everything from scratch yourself? They've got some stuff that they'll give you, but the problem is that it does need to be unique for each person because mm. of the carrier requirements. Because if the carriers are seeing the same exact messages going out over and over again in different Launch Control environments, that's mm. where they're going to um, hit you. So Launch mm -hmm. Control does help. The issue that I had when I was working with them is this is made for household sailors. Mm -hmm. So it's very, you know, hey, I'm you know, looking about your, your house. I'm wondering how many bedrooms, you know, can we get the household sailors jump on the call right away because they don't care. Mm -hmm. Really? I mean, they'll buy any house. They mm -hmm. don't really care about the condition versus us. There's so many things I have to know. Does it have road access? Mm -hmm. Is it underwater? You know, there's just a lot more. So I don't want to waste my time on the phone. So that's why we've had to kind of create our own because it's just a kind of a different yeah. conversation. And this is part of your secret sauce, right? Because you've done this for so yes. long and you know, you know what kinds of quick replies will work and doesn't turn people off and scare people away and all this stuff. So exactly. just for the listeners and watchers out there, just be aware of that. If, if you have no idea where to start or if you have something, but you don't know if it's the best, Calic can help with this. This is something she is really good at. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, found people smarter than me that do copywriting for a living. And I told them what I need and we tested mm -hmm. it out with me and 40 other people. And we've We've got it pretty dialed in. Does Launch Control, do they have copywriters who can help with this or can they, they point you? So yep. if somebody's watching this and they just, they need- Give me they, something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. So reach out to Launch Control. That's another option. They might not know the land business specifically, but it can at least give you something to work with. They'll get you something to work with. Okay. So we've got to want to explain one more type of message and it actually exists in a kind of a separate part of Launch Control. And these are called drips. 
Drips are huge. Uh, This is also another reason why I chose launch control. So a drip is a, once they respond to you, part of it is I really want them to respond to that first message because that means I can put them on an automated text strip. If they Mm -hmm. don't respond, I have to keep manually sending those follow-ups every Mm -hmm. time I want to send a message. So let's say they respond and say, you know, not now, maybe later. And I just have a drip call maybe later. And I say, great, you know what? I'll touch base in a few months and I'll see kind of how things are going. So I can say on day 90, I want to say, hey, first name, just checking in. Still interested in talking about your lot. Toss an emoji in there. Now we have to have at least two text spinners, which we haven't gotten to yet. This is another reason why I love launch control. They make you create these things called text spinners. So we'll say still interested in, still want uh, still interested in, still open to, still uh, want to, still interested in, open to, want to. It doesn't make sense. Still interested in, interested in chatting. We'll just do this. I get what you're trying to do. The, the main idea is that, is this that we is want like... to, this is what makes it unique, right? So exactly. it doesn't flag it as spam or something. Yeah. So we Not have right. to have two text spinners in each. So just checking in. So I'll say just checking in, just reaching out. So with these text spinners, you will notice that this whole thing, it doesn't say how many variations we have, but I can imagine it has 20 different variations of how this message would go out. So it could say, hey, Matt, just checking in, still interested in chatting about your lot. Or it could say, hey, Matt, just reaching out, still open to chatting about your lot. Those text spinners are helping create variability. Mm -hmm. It has to have a merge field. Okay, cool. And then we're going to say if he doesn't, uh, res- now if he responds, he'll come to the top of your inbox and you can adjust from there. But if he doesn't respond, then let's just say um, another three months later, hey, hey, checking in, same thing, blah, 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 blah. And you can have this baby go for years and years. That is the power, like one of the biggest powers of launch control mm-hmm. is if someone comes in and says not now. So many of us, if it's if they if they say not now for Lynn or for their mailer, they'll they won't even ever respond most of the time. You'll never even know they're saying not now. But mm-hmm. this is amazing where you can just get them on a trip um, so that they're getting touches from you mm-hmm. for a certain amount of time. And then advanced people, tech people, you can get them on an email drip in your CRM, a tech strip in here, and have a reminder to call them quarterly for a lot of the magic happens. What exactly gets them on this drip? Do you have to recognize what they're trying to say? Like maybe they don't use the words not now, but they say maybe later, or maybe there's some other way that they word that. So it's not like the words trigger it, but you have to understand it and then put it in there manually. Exactly. Yes. So if, if this is not the right time, however, they say that Mm -hmm. they're going to go on our long-term trip Mm -hmm. campaign. If they, if we sent them a text and they originally said, yes, and then we sent them another one and they didn't respond, we're going to put them on a drip called stopped responding. Mm-hmm. And that's going to send them some quicker texts. Mm-hmm. Know, day one, day three, day four, day five. It's like, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? So we've got probably six different drip messages that we we get in for our clients, depending on what they say. And so that your VA doesn't have to be manually doing these little follow-up messages. We let the system do that work for us. Say we just imported our list and there's, I don't know, 5,000 people on there How many of these people should you be sending texts to per day? And is it just like one text per day? And if they don't respond, is it like the next day? Or I don't know, just help me understand uh, the the volume of it. Yeah, Yeah, so I like to tell my clients, the ones that have a VA working for them that can handle this, 5,000 to 7,500 texts per month is kind of that sweet Mm -hmm. spot of where I want them to be. That's initial text messages sent. Inside of that, you're going to get responses and you're going to have people saying, maybe, or who are you? Tell me more. Yes, I want an offer. You know, those type of conversational texts, who knows how many that's going to be. I don't like to harp too much on that number of text messages because every area is totally different. I will say the conversion from text sent to signed purchase agreements right now is point. Zero 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 four. So if you're sending 5,000 texts a month, I'm assuming you're going to get two signed purchase agreements that mm-hmm. month. That's like a very high level. That's just an average across the board that I'm seeing when I'm looking at the numbers of my different clients and looking at my numbers combined. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I'm going after higher margin deals. I, w- I won't do a deal under 20,000, but I'm really looking for margins more like 50, 60, 70,000. 
the higher the margins, the more text you're going to have to send. If you're sending text to people that are send it, selling their property for $100,000, $300,000, that's just a more sophisticated buyer, typically someone that's this is an investment for them versus somebody that has a, a little more of a less expensive property. Sometimes they don't even know they own it and mm. they don't <laughs> inherit it or it just doesn't mean as much. There's just not that much importance to them. So you probably will be able to send less text to, mm -hmm. to do more deals. Gotcha. And based on that monthly volume you're talking about, I know it doesn't matter that much, but the 497 gives you 10,000 outbound messages per month. So is that 5,000 to 75,000 like new contacts or does that include follow-ups and replies? That's a great question. It does not include any of those conversational messages and it doesn't include any drips. It includes mm -hmm. first messages and follow-up messages. Okay, so really great. people that have not ever responded to you, that's what it's counting. So you can actually get a lot more messages. 10,000 yeah. isn't really the limit. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're doing the drips and the conversational stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. just talking about like marketing wise. And just mm -hmm. something to be aware of on the, the texting piece is they do cap you per day. So they don't want the carriers to see a ton of messages going out per day. Let's see what we are. I think it's the lower tier is 600 messages per yeah, day right. is the cap right now. So that's healthy. I mean, in my opinion, that's going to be very healthy for somebody that's getting going. Now mm -hmm. I have a client who sends 7,500 texts per day. He's mm -hmm. on a custom plan. He has 20 people working for him. So Whoa, yeah. And he's signing, he's getting 30 signed PAs a month from 7,500 text messages a day. So you guys can work backwards on that. Um, he has a significant organization that, that does very, very well. So mm -hmm. then he's obviously ramped up to that over time, but this is... I would say to start 600 messages a day is plenty. Mm -hmm. Gotcha.